intricately worked statuettes, thousands of pieces of jewelry. Here at last, in Europe, was the evidence archaeologists have been searching for. Symbolic art that could only have been made by people who could talk and think like us. And it all dated from the same period, around 35,000 years ago. The European evidence was beyond doubt. It was as if a light bulb had gone on inside the human brain, a thinking Big Bang. For some reason, we'd suddenly become truly modern humans. All of the elements of the human mind are in place to create everything that exists subsequently, to go to the moon, to create writing, to create agriculture, to do all of the things that we've done over the subsequent 35,000 years. And so it seemed the moment we'd learned to think had been found. This landmark moment in human history became known as the Human Revolution. Just how powerful this human revolution must have been was shown by something else, something more disturbing. For when our ancestors first arrived in Europe, 35 to 40,000 years ago, there were people already waiting for them. Another species of human who'd been living in Europe for hundreds of thousands of years. They were called the Neanderthals. It's difficult for us to, to accept, even to understand this notion of different species of humans living in the same world. Very, very strange. The Neanderthals were as much a part of the human family as we are, closer to us than any living animal like chimpanzees. But because they'd come out of Africa long before our immediate ancestors, they had evolved along very different lines. The face of a Neanderthal is a very long face and it's also very projecting in, in, the, in the middle portion of the face. And it's very likely that Neanderthals had a very big and very projecting nose. That, that was probably a, a very spectacular feature. The Europe the Neanderthals had made their home had been racked by a succession of ice ages. It was a punishing environment and one which shaped their whole physical appearance. They have long trunk and rather short limbs, which is something which allows to retain some warmth in the body. I would say they look a little bit like Eskimos. They were very well adapted to this very challenging and very changing environment. But about 40,000 years ago, something happened to them that never happened before. What happened was the arrival of the modern humans. After 250,000 years of life, the Neanderthal species was wiped out almost overnight. For scientists, the arrival of the modern humans and the disappearance of the Neanderthals had to be more than a coincidence. The first clues to understanding what might have happened emerged when they studied Neanderthal tools. 
when you're confronted with certain aspects of Neanderthal, of the Neanderthal archaeological record, you scratch your head because you say, I don't understand. I wouldn't have done it that way. Why didn't they do it this way? Neanderthal tools were very different to ours in one crucial respect. Everything was much simpler. And above all, unlike the modern humans, there was no Neanderthal art. And so, no evidence these primitive humans could actually think. Neanderthals don't seem to have produced anything that we would really call art. They don't seem to have produced personal ornaments. They were, in fact, truly primitive people. Sure, they were human, they just weren't modern human. And so archaeologists put together a theory to explain their disappearance. 40,000 years ago, modern humans arrived in Europe and suddenly started to think. This gave them a unique advantage over the Neanderthals. In the battle for the scarce resources left by the Ice Age, brains won out over brawn as our superior minds allowed us to defeat our physically tougher neighbors. One population capable of communicating better, capable of inventing better, capable of organizing better, in the face of a population that had none of that in their 300,000 year tradition, it seems to me that the, the competition would not have lasted very long. Unable to think like us, the apparently inferior Neanderthals were pushed to the brink of extinction until finally they vanished altogether. This, then, was the final proof of the power of the human revolution. That sudden dawning of thought had allowed us to surpass even our nearest relatives. The human revolution had given us the power to take over the world. But then, the muttering started. A strange anomaly emerged that didn't quite fit with the human revolution story. It began when scientists started looking for the first traces of that other supposed proof of thinking. Not art, but language. It was Jeffrey Leitman who started the confusion. He's an expert in anatomy, and in particular, one small part of the human body. The part we use to speak, the throat. The throat is arguably the most important region in all of human anatomy and physiology. As a native New Yorker, I like to think of this as the grand central station of the human body. These are really nice. This is a really clear picture. Leitman began studying the human voice box, or larynx. He discovered that in the course of evolution, our larynx had moved to a very different position to that of all other mammals. Something has happened in you and me. And what's happened has been rather remarkable. Our larynx has descended in the throat. One key gain, of course, is that by the larynx being lower in the throat, you have space above it. So what we get in the deal is a mechanism which has turned us sound-wise and turned us vocal-wise from being a, a bugle to being a trumpet. Around the yeah, Which one right. am I following Start through? Category, beautifully here, beautifully. What the lower larynx gives us is the ability to speak. The upper clip is over 